Throughout history, taverns have been the hubs of society, where people could come together to meet, celebrate, or just relax and strengthen that sense of community. In today's hectic world, this is sometimes forgotten. At Drinking Texas, we're on a mission to remind you. We're out there making friends one beer at a time, and we're doing it at some of the greatest joints you might never have heard of. We find the hidden gems, the places where they still make food like they used to, where they pour cold beers like they're supposed to, and where you hear great music like we all need to. The kinds of places that you'll want to share with your friends. That's why we're taking you to some of the best venues around for finding a cold beer and having a good time. Whether you're looking for an entire lost weekend or just a weekday happy hour. So join us as we visit the bars, breweries, and dance halls that make Texas great. This is Drinking Texas. White Horse Tavern in Burton is new on the bar scene, about five years now, but it's in a building with 100 years of history. It's been a mercantile, a real estate office, and most famously the White Horse Cafe, where generations of folks would come to get a hearty, home-cooked meal. White Horse Tavern pays respect to its past with historic decor, an old-fashioned lunch menu, and a friendly atmosphere. And while it's a little off the beaten path, there's no better place to get a cold beer and listen to live music. Let's go inside. Okay, do it. Every once in a while, if the stars are aligned and the conditions are just right, an establishment will take on the personality of its owner. A perfect example of this is Allison Krausen and her White Horse Tavern. With a lifetime as a performing musician and a career as a school teacher under her belt, she's quickly turned this charming little wooden building into a lunch counter, beer joint, live music venue that is top notch without losing its small town feel. Hey, Mike and I are here with Allison at the White Horse Tavern in Burton, Texas. Allison, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for being here. Oh, our pleasure. <laughs> uh, Mike has a question for you. Yeah, I saw on Yelp that we're, you're not really a great sports tavern. <laughs> well, you know, I also do my own yard service, so <laughs> that was a problem, though. That is a funny story. I got one low Yelp review, and it's because I had to mow my grass instead of open the <laughs> open the bar. So, so <laughs> go, go ahead, go ahead. Tell us, uh, tell us about the phone call. <laughs> well, I don't. The, the White Horse has no telephone, so if somebody calls, they're going to talk to me on my cell phone, which is great. And so, a fellow just called one day and wanted to know if I was going to be open and have a certain football game or uh, an athletic event on, and. And I said, oh gosh, I, I really probably need to mow my grass, so I'm probably not coming out today. And so <laughs> I guess he just thought that was a funny thing to put on Yelp, but he gave me a two for it and never even set foot in the place, but that <laughs> yeah. still curved it well, just the slightest. That's his loss, because if he'd have showed up, he'd have yeah, he right. waited you at least a five. Or he could have helped me mow the grass no, and then no, we could have both come out here. Somebody's greedy, you should have shown up. <laughs> Yeah, that, I would give him a two for his lawn service. <laughs> yeah. um, how about, uh, tell us a little bit about the history of this place. This building has been here for quite this a while. This is a great building. It's almost 100 years old. It was a mercantile first in uh, the mid-20s, and then it became a series of different cafes and bars and beer joints. And, and uh, the establishment that Burton locals know it for, for the longest amount of time, would be Miss Annie's White Horse Cafe and that was Annie Bainaman. And she ran it for many years. Uh, she served lunch and supper, or lunch and dinner. And so she would do things like stay open at night for the basketball team if they had an away game. She'd cook chicken fried steaks for them when they, you know, when they got off their bus or whatever. A lot of folks have told me uh, that they walked, would walk down here from school, have a hamburger or a Coke after school for, you know, 50 cents or something like that. And, uh, nice. Uh, so it sounds like she was a real character too. People, oh, yeah. people have said she was feisty and that, uh, and that she could also hold her own if, <laughs> if she needed to. So that's the history of the building. And uh, Roger Chambers bought it and restored it. Uh, and then I took it over in 2013. And so we've just had a ball being in here. And um, it's a great room. It's a great room for bands. It's a great room for musicians, uh, uh, large and small uh, ensembles. Fantastic. So I know that you uh, start off as a school teacher and a principal. Mm -hmm. How did you come to own the White Horse Yeah, Tavern? well, I was a teacher for a long, long time, and then I was an assistant principal at Brenham High School for many years. And so, but uh, through all of that, I always played music. I was always either in a band or playing, and, and I've always been, you know, my church organist and giving piano lessons. And so I always had my finger 
sort of in the pie, but not my whole, not the palm of my hand. Right. <laughs> so uh, there's a cute little pub that was just down the street called the Pig and Whistle, mm -hmm. and I played there for quite a while. And then this just kind of developed, and Roger Chambers, who is the the fellow that restored the building, he twisted my arm and said, why don't you try running this? Why don't you try running a, a live music establishment right. bar? bar? And so I did that for three years while I was still an assistant principal. And that was hard. That was hard coming out at night and then going back. Or, but it all worked. It all worked out. And then I retired two years ago and have been able to be out here a whole lot more. Get a food permit, serve lunch, do a lot of catering, a lot of parties, a lot of events. And so it's kind of evolving all the time, but it's a, it's a great place to be, and, and I'm here a lot. Allison has revived the White Horse Cafe's practice of offering lunch during the week. It's a limited but enticing menu. So what, what kind of menu have you got here? Well, lunch is Tuesday through Friday, and it changes every week, and it's usually something pretty hearty, like a lasagna or an enchilada type thing. We have a lot of people that eat here are just coming maybe on their lunchtime, locals or whatever. Mm -hmm. So we usually have one or two entrees that are going to be fairly hearty and then we'll have something, some sort of salad, some sort of soup. Uh, we always have hamburgers available or potato soup, so it's homemade pimento cheese. But it's, it's, it's great. It's a lot of fun. Most days it's just me. So it's sort of like just coming to your grandma's for lunch. But like Allison, the White Horse Tavern is primarily about the music. And some of the best musicians in Texas stop by to play on the weekends. Artists such as Mark Lehman, guitarist Bobby Witten, bassist Harlan Cobos, and steel guitar player Steve Polasek have all ridden the horse. <laughs> oh. uh, so you book all the music too? I do, I do, I do, I do. That's one of the, I guess, benefits from just playing. I've been playing music or gigging for 20, about 25 years, so... A lot of my friends play here. A lot of we put together a lot of bands. You know, we have some um, we have some musicians that just being in Burton, we're so close to Houston, Austin, mm -hmm. San Marcos, um, the Granger area, the Waco area, and there are just some incredible musicians that live in those areas. And if you can time it just right, you know, you can you can put together some really really neat little bands. And and it's fun for musicians because it might be. Maybe they've never even played before, but if it's all standard and they're right. good enough musicians, mm -hmm. then everybody's going to have fun because right. you're not doing the same old set list that you do, you know, every single weekend or whatever. So you can check out the website at www.burtonwhitehorse.com to keep up with the lunch menu and the entertainment lineup. But to see all the rare and unique decor, you've got to come to the White Horse. Right. Yeah. So a lot. I love, I love a lot of the decoration here. Uh, who, who did that? Did you do all that? Some, a tiny bit of it is mine. Most of it is stuff that Roger has collected over the years. Yeah, Roger Chambers. And a lot of it was just stuff that was still in the White Horse. And mm -hmm. he just tacked it up on the, on the walls. Roger used this for a real estate office for, oh, I don't know, maybe a couple years or so. And then he bought a, another historic building down the street and moved his office there. And that's when this became converted into a into a bar mm -hmm. but most of this is Rogers uh, some of it is Brian Shirley's from when he owned it Brian owned it for about a year and a half mm -hmm. uh, before I had it and then just and some of it's mine so I, I asked about the decorations because I, I noticed uh, this picture oh now that <laughs> <laughs> yes that one that one with the one dollar price tag on. <laughs> that's yeah. the one yeah that is a that is not that is up there, not out of vanity, but to remind me to, I don't know. Okay, here's what happened. I thought, okay, I've had a couple of headshots made in the past just because I thought, you know, up and coming yeah. country star, you That's know. Right. So anyway, I used to give these headshots out at all of the little Opry's and the shows that I played. So this went to some lady named Verna, and I don't know uh, what, what year it was. It would have been at least 20 years ago because I was pregnant with my third child. That's why I'm wearing that certain shirt. But anyway, so uh, uh, my sister 
was in a thrift store a couple years ago shopping for vases for her daughter's wedding reception. <laughs> and she went by the, there was a bin that had picture frames for sale for a dollar. It was just full of old picture frames. So she looked down and there I was for sale for one dollar <laughs> oh, awesome. on August the 7th. Because that's, a, and that's a, a, what it, when it had been put out I, on the floor. I'm pretty sure that makes you famous. <laughs> so she, my sister said, I couldn't leave you there. Yeah. She said, I paid the dollar and... She brought me home. You know, and you, know she to tried, me. you know she tried to talk him down. <laughs> she probably, maybe it was the half price day. Fifty <laughs> cents. Right. I'll give you. Look, I don't know who this person is, but I'll give you fifty yeah. cents for it. Yeah. <laughs> well, she gave it to me on my birthday, and we laughed so hard. She oh. thought it was going to offend me, and then yeah. she said, "Don't feel bad," because she used to make like crafts and yeah. sell them in craft sales. She said, "Don't feel bad." Two of my Santas were in there for two dollars <laughs> each, so she bought both she, the Santas and me for five bucks she, and she walked was trying out. To, she was trying to. Um, you got anything else, or are you ready for uh, random, random questions? Random questions. Random oh, questions. I'm ready. Okay. Oh my. All right. Uh, first question: uh, What was the first beer you ever had? Oh well, that's very easy to answer. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost people are going to think I'm copying Robert Earl Keane, but I'm not. Probably like a Slitz. Well, he he copied you. And then, <laughs> and he, that's saw, true. he saw that photo. That's and he's true. Like, I think I am. That's who I yeah. want to be. That's right. That's right. Yeah, I would think a Slitz probably in about the third grade. <laughs> Because that's what he said in yeah. a little one of his little See, live he, things. He's, he's trying to copy your life. Yeah. I think I saw a photo yeah. with him with that same shirt well, on. Well, and ironically <laughs> enough, it was after helping mow some grass. You know, <laughs> yeah. my, my parents had a huge so. yard growing up, and so I just remember being young and helping mow the grass, and then maybe you split a beer with your dad. And, uh -huh. And it was slits back in the early like 70s. You, you, know? Don't st you don't still drink slits, do you? No, no, no. Don't carry slits. Yeah, um, yeah. You I would. Don't carry pearl either. Yeah. <laughs> All the pearl size. Um, That's a funny question. Bob Wills or oh, Hank Williams? Oh, dear. Oh, oh, my goodness. Oh, dear. Yeah. We didn't say they were going to be easy questions. Okay, and I have to, I have to choose one. Oh, yeah. And tell us why. Okay, the only reason I'm going to go, wow, we could do a whole episode on that. <laughs> I think just being a Texan, I'll have to go with Bob Wills, I guess. That, but that is that's the correct tough. answer. Okay, good. <laughs> He's still that's the king, tough. apparently. He, yeah. I heard that coming in, that Bob Wills was still the king. He still is, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know, he was, a, he was a fiddler, but he wasn't really a super great musician. Mm -hmm. He was just a super great organizer you know yeah. and and he lived a lot longer than Hank Williams did or whatever gosh there's just so many different things about both of them that that's a, that's a really tough question but I'll, I'll go ahead and stand with with Bob okay. and what do you miss about uh, being at the high school oh gosh probably just the the fast-paced like a roller coaster you know I really didn't watch very much TV when I was an administrator because you had comedy you had action drama suspense you know, not murder, but I mean, you had, you had, right there in the hall, you so. had every dramatic or comedic element really that you needed because when I was at the high school, we probably had, you know, 1,500 kids or whatever. It's a good sized campus. So I would get home and, you know, maybe watch a Western or some or gun smoke, but I didn't really mm -hmm. keep up with the love what's on TV. And now that I'm retired, I do that a little bit more. You know, I watch the news every night or whatever, watch it, uh, uh, PBS News Hour and, and sometimes I think I, I didn't need to do that back then because I had all that in a little microcosm yeah, right. of a of a of a high school. Yeah, yeah. So that that part that part I missed. But yeah. Uh, favorite thing to bake? Oh wow! Favorite thing to bake? Taco lasagna, Ooh. which we serve at the White Horse. <laughs> <laughs> Taco lasagna. Taco lasagna. It's right. easy. Sounds good. And you don't have to chop an onion up. That's oh, there you the go. biggest <laughs> thing. As long as you don't have to chop an onion up. And uh, okay, so so what is your perfect evening? What is a perfect evening? Okay, this is gonna sound very cliche and set up, but a perfect ending for me was a Schlitz. Would be well, <laughs> would be playing like in a trio here at the White Horse, like a because I play keyboard or piano, yeah. and uh, uh, you know uh, pianos are so advanced, or keyboards are so advanced now. There's a function where. The left hand is can be just like a bass. Mm -hmm. Now there's no substitute for a really, really right. good bass player, but I can limp along and get us through it. So a perfect evening for me would be uh, me on piano, a drummer, and then maybe like a really good steel guitar player here playing and doing a gig. Yeah, a lot nice. of people, mm -hmm. a lot of fun, you know. Yeah. 
good cash register tape, tape yeah. at the end. <laughs> Everybody gets paid. And All right. That's we it. good? I think we're yeah. good. So, come on out and say hi to Allison. Have you cold beer? Get you lunch during the week. And uh, keep making friends one beer at a time and stay Texas. See you. Got it?